G'day. What is software as a medical device and why are we all so excited about it? If you're working in medical devices or in digital health, you've probably heard the term software as a medical device, may have even been using it yourself. It's often shortened to SAMD or SAMD. But why all the excitement? Well, first of all, although SAMD itself is a new term, the concept is not. But there are some important developments in the world of medical device software and SAMD that create some new challenges for developers and for regulators. So let's have a look at the most important ones and see which ones will affect you if you're a developer or a consumer. First of all, what is SAMD? Well, it's a piece of standalone software that meets a legislated definition of a medical device. Importantly, SAMD runs on general computer hardware. This means a PC, a smartphone or tablet, something like that. Embedded software that runs on the medical device itself or software that requires a medical device to operate is not SAMD. That's either part of a medical device or an accessory. Importantly, SAMD is a medical device. This means that in most developed markets, it's a regulated product. So what makes it special compared to other medical devices? So I've already said that medical device software has been around a long time. Um, some examples go back to the 1970s. These established examples are often for image analysis and other computationally intensive applications. And these, this is because this is where computing was first used in medicine. Also, it's important to realize that medical device regulations are newer than medical device software. So Australia's medical device framework was only being developed in the early 2000s, um, published in 2002. Medical device software had been around by a long time by then. And so our regulations consider medical device software, including SAMD. It's also true in Europe and the US and other similar countries. Um, that early 2000s period is where medical device frameworks were generally conceived. But despite two decades of being regulated by medical device frameworks, there have been big changes in the world of medical device software and SAMD. First of all, we now have smartphones. Okay, we didn't have smartphones in 2002. We have changed the way software is developed and distributed. In the late 90s, early 2000s, um, software was still the realm of big software companies published on hard media that you bought from a store. These days, um, distributed through the internet by app stores, very different. The internet itself is more accessible than it was in the early 2000s and we certainly didn't access it on computers we carried in our pockets. If we look at an example in Australia, um, as I said, our regulations um, came into being in 2002. At that time, when they were developing those regulations, which were developed in you know, the late 90s leading into 2002, they just didn't consider that they would need to regulate software that was capable of making a clinical decision that was developed by an individual, published to the internet to be downloaded by anyone, and runs on a high power computer carried around in people's pockets. Um, the technologies for that to happen didn't exist and it wasn't considered. Now these are all fantastic developments in technology, okay, don't get me wrong, they're important and huge steps forwards in healthcare have happened because of them. Okay, manufacturers and developers of medical devices, not, not just software but hardware as well, have been able to use these technologies to help us manage our healthcare and to help um, clinicians in their practice. Also these changes have made medical device software and SAMD more accessible. It's cheaper to produce. Um, now, instead of a couple of dozen specialty products made by a handful of big companies, 
we have hundreds of thousands of consumer medical apps to help us with our healthcare. However, you take all these changes together, um, the modern medical device software paradigm is very different to the one that was in play when our regulations were written. Software now can be developed and distributed by pretty much anyone, and we can use it to make medical decisions because computing power has advanced so much. And importantly, we now carry computers around in our pockets, and those computers are connected to the internet and the cloud and other high-powered technologies. This creates a challenge in monitoring safety and performance. Importantly, this isn't just a challenge for government, so a challenge for everyone, for the regulator, for the developers making the products and for the consumers using them. So for the developers, how do they prove their products are safe? How do they prove their products do what they say they do? And more importantly, how do they prove that they remain safe and continue performing while they're in the market? You know, modern software is updated almost continuously. We've also got technologies that adapt themselves and gain their power from that ability to adapt to better solve the problem. But we've already seen how those adaptive technologies can go wrong. Um, we've seen with AI and machine learning technologies where if the data set used to train them is biased, you get different outcomes for different populations depending on whether the data was biased against them or not. For consumers, they now have hundreds of thousands of medical apps available to them. How do they decide? How do they work out which ones have been properly validated? Which ones do what they say they do? How do they know which ones are being actively maintained by developers who are keeping up with best practice in medical science, engineering and medicine? For governments and regulators, how do they monitor a marketplace where the product is so easily available, can change so quickly? How do they ensure that the developers of those products are applying the regulations correctly and protecting their customers? Well, these challenges are exactly why medical device frameworks are changing around the world. They need to account for these new situations. This is why there are international harmonisation efforts, why countries are getting together to decide how to deal with SAMD and to create regulations that account for these SAMD specific situations. Join me next time when we look at how SAMD products are regulated and what you need to do if you're a SAMD developer. I'm Dr Lee Walsh from Platypus Technical. See you next time.